Okay, this is my you know see me hat. On the back of it, it says never give up. Number 15 with an X on the bottom. Hope you can see that. And it looks like uh, somebody giving you like an okay sign, but it also looked to me when I first looked at like a beer stein. Okay. So today's topic is age 11. Age 11 uh, is an age when you are at one of the peaks of your intelligence when you're a human being, believe it or not. Because beyond age 11, you start getting into puberty and uh, sex hormones start pumping through your body and they make you kooky and crazy and horny. And uh, someone who's 11 years old and sees their older siblings or their you know, their friends, older siblings that are teens. Um, in some ways, it's a little bit exciting, but in some ways, it's like, uh, do we really have to go through this? I mean, they're acting all crazy, you know. They want to leave their friends so they can go hang out with their girlfriend, and, you know, and when you're 11 years old, it's like, mm, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, my shirt is 73. Uh, it's because it's Sheldon from... The Big Bang Theory's favorite number, and he does wear a t-shirt like this, apparently. I am drinking from my perennial sippy cup. Sip happens. And this is the issue, is that with the camera on this phone, I can't always see wh where it's pointed at. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking it's there, but really it's more like that. And it's the same thing when I'm showing you, you know, see me, and I'm showing you these items. Okay, what else do I want to talk about? So that's all I want to remember. I want you to remember when you were 11 years old, your duty is to go somewhere and get a pad of paper and a pen and remember everything that was going on when you were 11 years old. Who was your teacher? Or maybe you had multiple teachers. Who was your principal? Who was your janitor? Uh, let's see, who were your friends? What sports were you playing? What books did you read? What TV shows did you watch? What music did you hear? You can go to Billboard on uh, the internet and look up the year when you were 11 years old. Uh, did you go on any trips when you were 11? What were the political events that were going on when you were 11 years old? Uh, what were the dramas that were going on with your friends? Uh, what did you think about the teenagers when you were 11 years old? What did you think about the little children when you were 11 years old? What did you think you wanted to do when you were an adult when you were 11 years old? Who did you admire? Who, who inspired you when you were 11 years old? Who were your sports heroes when you were 11 years old? Who did you really think stunk? People that, you know, you just thought, oh, what an asshole when you were 11 years old. And continue on down the line. Uh, write as many pages as you can. Uh, or you could just pick up your smartphone and start talking about age 11. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to talk to you about? Okay. Okay. I'm a person wearing my hat backwards. What does it mean? Does it mean too much? 73. 1973. What does it mean to me? I was eight years old in 1973. 1973, uh, it was um, kind of the finale of the Vietnam War. Uh, we'd had Richard Nixon. Uh, I think by 1973, he was basically, uh, he had to resign because he was a crook. And his famous um, picture is him going, blah, 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 I am not a crook, blah, 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 because he had really big jowls, but that's what he did. He would give this the peace sign. He wasn't a peace person, but there were a lot of peace, protest, peace protesters in those days that gave the peace sign. So he would put two hands up like this, and he would go, I am not a crook. Well, he was a crook, but he was also an alcoholic, and he was also a Quaker. And a Quaker is a, a strange branch of Christianity. It's a very minor sect. And what they are supposed to do is, I think they're supposed to do a lot of meditation. 
Uh, I think his mother was a Quaker, and that was what he was brought up as, but I don't think he meditated. He hit the bottle. And in one interview, Henry Kissinger, who was his Secretary of State at the time, said something to the effect of he was so intoxicated most of the time that sometimes he would give orders and um, the rest of the cabinet who was who weren't drunk uh, countermanded his orders and basically if he would give orders to the military to do this or that uh, the rest of the cabinet would take the generals inside and said the man is stinking drunk he is incompetent and you cannot carry out um, the orders of a drunken lunatic in other words we're in the middle of the Cold War with the Soviet Union, and if the man is drunk and he orders you to launch a nuclear strike, you cannot do it. He is incompetent, and we can't, you know, what else can we do? The man is technically the president, but he appointed us, and we're the ones that are the ones that, that have to follow his orders, and we can't follow his orders because the man is insane. And it was true. He, uh, for the election, 1972, Richard Nixon got a bunch of thugs who are still around today, Paul Manafort, for example, but there was a number of them that were criminals. And he sent them off to, he was a Republican, and he sent them off to the Watergate Hotel, which was the headquarters of the Democratic Party, to break in to the headquarters of the Democratic Party because he wanted to steal the election. So he was a crook. And it's funny because Manafort works for the Republican Party to this day, and uh, the president, of course, Mr. Trump, is a Republican. Uh, I'm not sure how many of these other ones are around. Some of them have probably died by now, but... Um, Haldeman was another one. Some of them, like in the Department of Justice, that was the Department of Justice was tasked with investigating uh, Watergate, but it was kind of a conflict of interest because Watergate was all about the president, what he knew and when he knew it, and so the chief investigator, uh, I guess the Secretary of Justice Department, uh, reported and was appointed by the president, and then they had to have special prosecutors. Just like the special prosecutor Mueller was was tasked with investigating uh, what was going on with Trump and the election and the Russians, so it's a problem with American democracy that if there is trouble with the politicians, it's basically politically appointed people that are tasked with investigating their boss. Very delicate matter, and in some cases, the uh, uh, under Nixon. Uh, there were cabinet members who resigned rather than carry out Nixon's um, orders, and eventually it came to the, the same thing as Trump. It wasn't as bad as Trump, you know. Trump keep, keeps firing people, unbelievable. Um, but with Nixon, the decision was made among some of the senior members, and they said, look, maybe we'll let one person resign to let the people know that we disagree with the president. But sooner or later, you can't keep having people resign the same position because the position uh, has other duties besides investigating the president. So after one resignation, then we're going to just let someone stand there and, um, you know, act like, for example, the, the cabinet member that was responsible for justice. And we'll have to work around the president. So, you know, realistically, that's what people do. You know, they might send a signal, you know, by resignation, but then they say, fine, government must go on, and we're responsible for the people, and someone's got to be here for continuity. You can't have a new person in the job once a week because the rest of the country needs uh, someone in the position. Okay, this is just a pink hat. Uh, Komatsu is a uh, Japanese construction. Um, okay, what has uh, Japan got to do with today's talk? Uh, after World War II, when Japan surrendered, it was a military dictatorship. And they acted in the name of Hirohito, who was the emperor. But Hirohito was not giving the orders. 
It was a general named Tojo, who was the head of the military junta, which is a, kind of a, a Spanish name, and it was used a lot of times, or it might, be, might have been junta. I can't pronounce it in Spanish. I don't know Spanish, but that's how, the word. And it basically means uh, a gang of military officers who are running the country. Um, what else can I tell you? Okay, so I was going to tell you about the Gang of Four. The Gang of Four was a gang of, they weren't military, but they were Communist Party leaders uh, who ran China for a while. China when it was still communist before it became capitalist. I mean, even today, the government of China calls itself the Communist Party of the, of the People's Republic of China. But, uh, I mean, a lot of these politicians own uh, Chinese companies. And even the, the People's Liberation Army, which is the official name for the Chinese military, owns companies. And these companies are run based upon their Western counterparts. In other words, they use Western accounting methods and they're for profit. And the profit goes to, uh, you know, the primary owners. In one case, it would be the army. Other cases, it would be these point politicians who got there. How? Uh, it's a power struggle to get to the top of the Communist Party. And uh, I don't think they're past using all kinds of things like assassinations to get to the top. So that's what the Gang of Four was. They were known as notorious for their brutality. And even today, as Hong Kong uh, protests uh, domination by Chinese appointees, um, the people are out on the streets. Millions of people, uh, one quarter of the population of Hong Kong is now protesting that they don't want nothing to do with China. Because China, it sounds like a big, com a big company, it's not a big company. It's a small number of capitalists. It's just like uh, anywhere else in the world. It's a small number of capitalists. Um, and they have got this enormous army uh, because they want to enforce their will. So it's nothing about love for the people. It's about dominance by the very few using force. Okay, what else? What else have I got here about... Uh, this one, uh, no, I'm not going to talk too much about it other than, uh, why did I get into it? Well, Jap Japan was Komatsu. Uh, what else did I want to talk about Japan? So we're talking about Hirohito. After uh, the nuclear bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, uh, the Japanese government uh, soon after surrendered. And the terms of surrender were unconditional surrender to uh, General Douglas MacArthur, the Supreme Commander of the Pacific Campaign. And uh, the only thing the Japanese wanted, they wanted to keep the emperor. So this was given by the, I assume it was the American government acquiesced, and Hirohito kept his throne. I don't know where to go with that. I don't know where to go with that. What difference does it make? I don't know if it makes any difference, other than you have a constitutional monarchy. Uh, maybe they wanted to model um, Japan upon the parliamentary democracy of Great Britain, which has got a figurehead a queen, a monarch, and a elected parliament. Uh, so that would be the style of government. Okay, this is uh, 5 de Mayo. It's not mayonnaise. This is Sanco de Mayo, which is a Mexican celebration. All right, it's Christopher Isher, and as you know, I've been coming on this channel. I'm a playwright and novelist, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about something to do with... Nothing to do with Sanco de Mayo in Mexico right now. We're going to talk to you about... Mad Magazine. Mad Magazine announced that it's going to stop publishing again. It stopped publishing for a while and then someone revived it and apparently the sales of Mad Magazine are not high enough 
to keep the magazine going. So they announced in, de in December of 2019 that will be the last issue again. On the cover, we've got uh, Quentin Tarantino's latest movie and Leo DiCaprio in a cowboy hat with a pistol and he's wearing uh, boots with spurs. Alfred E. Newman, who is the mad mascot from Forever Ever, Forever is the outlaw with his picture here. Uh, up here, the price that used to be in 1977, 50 cents cheap. They always say cheap. Now it's a new number. And over here is the issue name. What else can I tell you? Uh, Eck. I don't know what he means here. It means Eck. E C C C C H Eck. On the back, we've got an advertising for Cadillac jewelry. A Cadillac on the bottom, some pearls, and women's boobs that are covered by a green gown. In the back of Mad Magazine, they always in the past had the Mad Fold In, and they do have a Mad Fold In here. And what happens is you've got a great big picture. And then what you're supposed to do is fold it in. I can't do it without folding it. And then the words change on the bottom here. The words change when you fold it in. Mad fold in. Very fun. In the end, I'm sad to see Mad Magazine go because I did buy the subscription. It was about $75 a year. Uh, it was money well wasted. What else am I going to tell you? Okay, Christopher has left the building. All right, this is... Well, in the past, when I wore this hat, I was doing my comedic imitation of Major Frank Burns from MASH 407 7th, which was a situation comedy uh, that was filmed in the 1970s. Uh, it was set in the Korean War, which was the mid-1950s, after World War II, and it was a, a big dispute between... Uh, the North Koreans who were allied with communist China and the South Koreans who were basically a very poor nation at the time and uh, the Western powers did not want Korea to become communist. So there was a great big, again it was General Douglas MacArthur who was still the, the general of the Pacific who was in charge of uh, defending Korea from North Korea and uh, China. What else can I tell you about Major Frank Burns? Uh, you can probably find some episodes of MASH on YouTube if you've never heard of MASH. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, TV show. It does stand the test of time because it was set as a historical piece. And you can always look back at historical pieces, irregardless of what today's date is, because they were set at a particular time place. Uh, it was originally a comedy. It was originally a movie. And then they uh, made the movie into a TV series. And they kind of changed it over the years. It was kind of stupid humor at the beginning. Very stupid um, juvenile humor. Uh, very sexist humor. Very, very sexist. And over time, uh, the series evolved into a study of uh, humanity. It was still funny, but it it uh, it just developed. It matured. The series matured over the years. Major Frank Burns, who I did an imitation of, many, maybe it was a year ago, um, was a very juvenile character, and eventually he left the show. But some people say their favorite character of all time is Major Frank Burns because he was a classic ass. And the comedy that was written around Frank Burns was very much Frank Burns trying to get the other people and the other guy is trying to get Frank Burns. Frank Burns had an ally, Major Margaret Houlihan. Frank Burns was a married man. He wasn't married to Mar Margaret Houlihan, but his wife was way back in the United States and Margaret and Frank had an ongoing sexual uh, relation. And they were both majors, so they outranked uh, the other doctors, uh, and the only person who outranked them was the colonel. 
So it was a madcap thing, but Frank wasn't by himself. He and Major Burns <laughs> cooked up all kinds of things. And mm, so anyway, it's a very interesting character. Unfortunately, I'm not able to play him right now. But why do we want to talk about slapstick, slapstick humor? Synaptic, slapstick. I was trying to say slapstick, which is kind of physical humor. Slapdick sounds like something to do with your dick pic, which is something that people on Tinder like you to do. Send them your dick pic. And let's see what else. Dip, 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 dip. That's like dipping your dipstick into your oil pan to see if you need more oil. I don't know where we're going with this. Perhaps we'll turn it backwards and say, okay, I start to think of my other hat, which has got to do with... Okay, this is Adidas, a famous German brand of sportswear, Adidas. When I was 10 years old, I had some Adidas t-shirts and things. We wore Adidas socks, which were very high white socks with colored stripes on the top of them, and Adidas shorts. It was very popular. And what does Adidas stand for? When I was 10 years old, Adidas stands for what does it stand for? Adidas. All day I dream about sex. Adidas sounds like... There was some guy who had a name like Adidas. It sounds like Ram Das, who was a spiritual guru kind of guy. And Adi... Somebody or other had a name like Adi that was a different kind of a spiritual teacher. A lot of times these kind of names make me think... I don't want to read anything to do with Ram Das or Adi, whatever the hell your name is, because they sound like kooks. You know, are they spiritual teachers? No, they sound like, they don't even sound like Frank Burns. They sound kooky. I don't want to learn from someone who's got a kooky name. Uh, okay. This one is, um, what does it look like to you? It looks like TJ. So TJ was a person I used to work with at a car dealership. TJ and I used to go out and shoot the shit when there was no customers around. And uh, when I first came to the car dealership, TJ was one of the salesmen who kindly helped me learn the ropes of being a car dealership salesman. Uh, we had a neighboring um, related dealership next to us, and TJ said, you never want to work there because those people are scumbags. <laughs> I had to laugh because uh, after I'd been at this particular dealership, the first thing that I wanted to do was bolt and go to the other dealership. Because, well, it was just that you could make more money at the dealership. The other dealership, you could make more money. The commissions were ch were better. Why am I saying the commissions are cheaper, better? Well, better or worse, it was just, it wasn't even a rivalry. It was just a stupid thing. But uh, what else did TJ tell me? Well, this also looks like LT. Instead of TJ, it looks like LT, which is lieutenant, which is the junior grade of military officer. Second lieutenant is the lowest, and then first lieutenant. Uh... Oh, I don't know where we're going with Lieutenant LT. Lieutenants, um, they're basically the ones that work with the grunts. In other words, the uh, non-commissioned officers would be like the sergeant and then down the rank corporal, uh, who's sort of the senior grunt, and then just the private, who is just the grunt. Uh, so the lieutenants were the ones in the Vietnam War who had to go out with the people that had to do the fighting. And the higher officers would be uh, sometimes, I mean, sometimes they showed even colonels being in the middle of the action. I mean, they're, but, you know, basically these were the ones that went on patrols. So they were the officer, they had the officer's code of conduct. And um, anyway, I don't know where I'm going with LT, LT, light, light, what is it? LT, well, you could have a lieutenant colonel who was like, they called it a light colonel. You weren't a full bird colonel. You were a light colonel. I don't know where we're going with that. 
Okay, this is a t-shirt of the Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Club. If you see, they've got Toronto Maple Leafs and they spell Leafs incorrectly. Because Leaves, L-E-A-V-E-S, is the proper way you say plural of leaf. But uh, Maple Leafs uh, misspell on purpose. And that is a spelling lesson. I have nothing more for Sheldon in 73. 1973, 1973, the Maple Leafs were uh, owned by an owner named Harold Ballard, who was infamous for being cheap. He was very, very cheap. He was so cheap that he had uh, the maintenance staff remove all of the wooden chairs from inside of Maple Leaf Gardens. And then he had an order put out for smaller chairs to be built so that he could jam more chairs into Maple Leaf Gardens so he could make more money. Uh, very uncomfortable to sit in very tiny chairs, but... Uh, people still came in droves. And he was cheap because he wouldn't uh, spend the money to get a winning team. The Leafs were perennially a crappy team under Harold Ballard. And uh, he was famous for firing coaches. He would, he would hire coaches that were kind of not very good coaches. He had, you know, not really great players. A few very good players, but... That was mostly because Leafs fans, where's my Maple Leafs? Leafs fans uh, made them super great players, but really they were just average Joes in the league because they didn't win. They didn't win the Stanley Cup under Harold Ballard. And um, the famous thing that Harold Ballard, he was a bit of a nut because he didn't like European players. But there was one European player that um, he broke his rule about, Borja Salming, who was a Swede, and he had to have Borja Salming, and Borja Salming could do no wrong. He just loved Borja Salming. And he was a great player. He, in those days, they didn't even, a lot of them didn't wear hockey helmets, and he would drop and block pucks as a defenseman. Uh, anyways, uh, on Canadian TV, uh, in those days, you either watched uh, the Montreal Canadiens or the Maple Leafs. Depending on where you lived, you had no choice. So in 1973, uh, we had mostly Leafs games. Occasionally, we saw the Montreal Canadiens, but mostly it was the Maple Leafs. There was no choice. There was no other channels. Sip happens. Okay, what else do I want to tell you about? Okay, this hat is never give up. If you're a hockey team, do you ever give up? Well, you get booted out of the playoffs. I guess you have to go play golf for the summer and try, try again. This hat that I'm going to put on looks like a cougar or a mountain lion. It's kind of a shiny one. It looks like, almost like uh, silk or something. So what do you think about silk? When it comes to mountain lions, hmm. mountain lions, lion, 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 lying, lying. Who is the most famous liar of all of the current time? Donald Trump. My father keeps telling me the story. Recently, it was uh, put out there that Donald Trump um, claimed that he'd won some prestigious award from the state of Michigan. And when the reporters went to look, uh, there was no such award, and of course Donald had not won it. So he's a famous fibber. What else do we have about cougars? Cougars, uh, I mean, that's what you call like a 38-year-old uh, woman who goes to bars to pick up 26-year-old men. I was going to say more like a 45-year-old woman who likes to pick up 18-year-olds, a cougar. There used to be a Mercury Cougar car that my old principal, when I was in grade 7 and 8, drove. 
Mercury Cougar. I don't think they make uh, Mercury anymore. Uh, Ford owned the Mercury brand and Cougar. It's time to go.